Good morning, everyone. I would like to extend a very warm welcome and a pleasant morning to everyone present here today. I'm Shweta Venkit from the ACR office, and I will be your MC for the day. I request everyone to kindly rise for the invocation. Nirarum kadaludutta nilamadandai keliludugum Sirarum vadana mena tigal barada kandamidil Tekkanamum madil siranda dravidanal tiranadum Takkasiru pirainudalum taritanarum tilagamume Atilaga vasanai polanai tulagum imba mura Yeti sayum pugal manakka irinda perum tamiranangye Tamiranangye Un sirilamai tirambiyand sayal marand vartu dume Vartu dume Vartu dume ಮಾತರಂ ವಂದೇ ಮಾತರಂ ಶುಭ್ರ ಜ್ಯೋತ್ಸ್ನಾಂಬುಲಕಿತಯಿ ಫುಲ್ಲ ಕುಸುಮಿತ ದ್ರುಮದಲ ಶೋಭಿನಿ ಸುಹಾಸಿನಿ ಸುಮಧುರ ಭಾಷಿನಿ ಸುಖದಾಂಬರದ ಮಾತರಂ ವಂದೇ ಮಾತರಂ ವಂದೇ ಮಾತರಂ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಐ ನೌ would like to request professor mahesh panchagnala dean alumni and corporate relations office to please present the welcome address good morning it's a delight to be here to welcome all of you uh, both in person here and those of those of uh, Uh, our friends that are either joining online or will be watching this inauguration later on on YouTube. Welcome to this uh, event. Uh, it's a delight to welcome Venkat and Jayashree back to IIT Madras. I don't know how often you've been here, ma'am, but Venkat, I know, has come here often. Welcome to both of you to IIT Madras. It's a delight to be here inaugurating the, the Venkat and Jayashree Rangan Center of Research Excellence on Wind Energy. Um, as we all know india is embarking on a fairly ambitious um, reinvention of our energy land landscape uh, the prime minister has promised that by 2020 2070 we would be completely renewable energy powered um, it's a tall ask there are many pieces of the puzzle that have to fall in place for a large country with growing energy needs where in the same time frame of 46 years we expect our gdp to increase four times or or five times uh, four times is a conservative estimate five is a more uh, realistic quote estimate as the as our gdp expectations with these gdp expectations and the corresponding energy needs growth scenario um we will we will have to be firing on all cylinders we will have to be firing on solar energy we would have to have a sizable pot of uh, our energy coming from wind we already are fairly well invested in hydroelectric and of course coal green coal as they call is not is also going to have to be 
harnessed not to mention nuclear energy which is a big piece of the larger puzzle that uh, at least a strength in india's uh, uh, quiver so with this there was one big missing piece of the puzzle at iit madras as far as our larger research context grows this center that uh, will bring together several dozen faculty members who would all be focused on creating new wind energy technologies for tomorrow i want to take a minute to relate the the story of how this took uh, took birth uh, about a year and 3 months ago venkat was in in chennai enjoying the december season and he took time off to come see us at iit he came equipped with a presentation on why iit madras needs a center for wind energy and this was full of hard data data that he had acquired by attending wind energy conferences on his own for the uh, for the past few years before then so it was a very well thought out uh, not just a very well thought out center uh, design but the vision for the center was also quite expansive i will let mauli talk about that as you know later on today but uh, i am very grateful to you venkat for not just coming forth to support this center but also to to help come with the initial thoughts on what the vision for this center should be and why iit madras should be the home for it in all my 5 plus years of doing of being in this deanship that was the first time a donor had come with a completely thought out plan of a gap at iit madras we think we are good at thinking of gaps but it was a clear case of where you know we had missed our uh, we had missed something on our own here on our own backyard here so with that i'll pause and uh, i'd like to welcome um, venkat jayashree and all of us here uh, to this morning's uh, inauguration of the venkat and jayashree rangan center for uh, center of research excellence in wind energy thank you thank you so much professor for extending a welcome and for setting stage i now request professor chandramouli head of the department of mechanical engineering to kindly address the gathering so good morning to all of you um and you know uh, let me begin by expressing our heartfelt thanks to uh, mrs jayashree as well as venkat for generously funding this initiative and we hope to see this you know the buildings come up and the facilities come up in the next 5 uh, to 6 months and i hope you can come and and see this grow as we as you know in the next few years as we take off uh, based on your uh, you know generous support so mahesh narrated the story so how i got drawn into this wind energy center i have to tell you so you will be wondering those faculty who are familiar with what i do for research will be wondering what is mauli doing uh, i am not here as head of the department i am here as the principal investigator for this center right and how i got drawn it is because of mahesh so of course my good friend diman with whom i have done a number of projects uh, over the years drew me into this saying you know uh, uh, he and satya from applied mechanics were working on this um, miniature um, the micro wind turbine for rooftop application which is one of the areas that we are going to focus as part of the um, center so he said you know uh, when it is put in the rooftop noise is a big issue and of course uh, i got dragged into it the moment uh, any noise is made mauli has to be around you know so kama will understand so so therefore i got dragged into this and then mahesh said wait a minute you know why don't you uh, become the man driving this and let them focus uh, on the um, Uh, you know the research part of it and you can be the one shouldering the administrative responsibilities for this and lo and behold i am here today in front of you um as part of this center we have uh, you know as mahesh was saying there are quite a few people um working on various aspects of wind energy but i think this center would be the kind of uh, you know the catalyst for bringing all these people together under an umbrella uh, and working so that's i think uh, what you have set uh, 
uh, as he said, you know, the gap is there, but I think uh, it is also great that we will, with his generous support, we will be able to initiate that kind of, uh, you know, grouping together and working together on um, uh, wind energy technologies. The primary focus that we have kept for our um, center is, is going to be uh, two extremes. One is actually on rooftop wind turbines, because we look at a decentralized way, you know, you generate your own uh, off-grid kind of things, which I think will be beneficial for India. And the second is, uh, which technology is already in place, but uh, we want to get into this because India will have its own set of issues that we have to resolve, which is offshore wind energy generation. So, in fact, on, on this side, um, you know, thanks to Satya and others, we have already initiated uh, a conversation with the University of Hull. We had uh, a few meetings. In fact, a small seed grants have been given to a, f a few of our faculty to initiate some research in this. And, and there is a, uh, already a research collaboration that has been initiated in this. We hope to take this further uh, through this uh, center, you know, as it, uh, as it uh, flowers over the next two to three years. So that's kind of the two uh, areas that we are, uh, you know, looking at. And we are looking at it in a very holistic way. It is not just, you know, research in terms of computation. Of course, that will happen, uh, you know, actual design, building prototype. And we are looking at the entire thing, you know, sensors, um, monitoring. So we have faculty with all these skill sets who will be part of this so that effectively what we will deliver and hopefully industry will pick this up and then, you know, uh, take this technology that we develop ultimately and, and, and you know, uh, commercialize this. But uh, we want to give them a package where we have thought about all the aspects that one needs to think about in terms of, uh, you know, designing and installing a wind turbine. So that's kind of the long-term goal. Uh, so we, we have, you know, planted the seeds. So we hope to, you know, in the next few years, IIT Madras um, already uh, is leading in sustainability, but we want to take this, um, you know, uh, uh, further and further. So um, uh, we will do this with, with the help of all the colleagues. Of course, Mahesh said there are 25 people. We have initially sat and discussed and formed, uh, you know, uh, uh, informally a team of 10, but uh, Nothing prevents us from adding to this, including people from other institutions across the country. So that will happen uh, in the next few months. So once again, I would like to thank uh, Mrs. Jayashree and uh, Venkat for this generous support. And, um, you know, I'm sure, uh, you know, you will see uh, good things in the next few years. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for giving us that insightful information and also for sharing an anecdote for the introduction and uh, the bond of the Center for the Wind Energy. I now request uh, Professor V. Kamakoti, Director of IIT Madras, to kindly address the gathering. A very good morning and a very hearty welcome, Venkat. I think this is the first time you are coming after being uh, uh, nominated for the Distinguished Alumnus Award for this year. So please join me in congratulating uh, Venkat for this. And thank you, Madam, for taking up the time to come here. Uh, of the three of the five Panchabhutas, Up, Tejas, and Vayu, I think uh, Vayu is one which is more, uh, more available than water and uh, uh, heat because solar energy is uh, available only during daytime. Well, um, River water is very seasonal. Hydal is also very se seasonal. Sometimes you get very good power, sometimes not. But I think water, uh, air is something which is much more available. And specifically when you look at re hilly regions, the government is actually betting on uh, making the net zero. Government is actually betting on wind energy. And we have seen a lot of uh, interesting proposals being floated by the government. Um, in that context, the micro... Um, turbine or micro windmill is something uh, very, very interesting. And uh, there are actually some startups who have come to IIT Madras basically projecting it. And I'm sure uh, the center will provide very interesting solutions in the area of wind energy. Um, we are now, uh, um, 
there are a lot of things that have happened and I'm sure this center is going to be sort of a magnet to bring a lot more people together. One is the School of Sustainability which Ashwin is heading and uh, that we have now a very clear agenda specifically on the energy part. We have an energy consortium, we have a center of excellence in energy and probably the first course, international course with an international university, Kathmandu University, now we have an energy system, uh, you know, joint MTech program. So we are going international in the energy uh, delivery of knowledge related to energy and I'm sure also in the Zanzibar campus we are also looking at infrastructure engineering as a uh, next uh, uh, MTech program that we are offering and certainly there will be the uh, offshore uh, windmills will become one more very interesting topic because like India Zanzibar also is completely surrounded by sea and for the maritime economy they, the blue economy um, when, uh, energy generation in the ocean is basically taken as a very prime uh, initiative there. Uh, so, and we also have this Kotak Energy Center uh, where we go to MSMEs and give them advice on how to save energy, what to invest on. In. And that has taken up a very good shape. Now we have seven uh, centers spawning across multiple IITs. As Mauli said, it's not just IIT Madras, but we are now spreading our wings across multiple IITs and I'm sure many of the research work that's going to happen in, uh, in, in this center would translate into some suggestions and some products there. Uh, I'm also very, uh, for people who are working in this area, the Ministry of Power approached us. Uh, they said that if you are going to recommend something as a solution to these uh, MSMEs, they will also come and vouch so that these MSMEs get some bank loan so that they could implement those solutions. So you give a uh, two crore worth solution, they need to get that two crore loan to implement it. So uh, the Ministry of Power said that they will make necessary arrangements for that. So that's a very good uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, joint industry, academia, and uh, government uh, effort that is happening in the energy uh, side. And uh, wind energy is going to really play a big role. So thank you very much, and I'm sure uh, within the next one year or so, uh, we would like to see some good startups, good patents, and also good research coming out that will be finally translated to something that is useful for the general public. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. We shall now commemorate this significant milestone by unveiling the plaque for the Wind Energy Center. I kindly request Mrs. Jayashree Venkatrangan, Mr. Venkatrangan, our director and dean, to please unveil the plaque. Thank you, everyone. It is now time for us to hear from our esteemed chief guest, Mr. Venkat Rangan. I kindly request you, sir, to please address the gathering. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it gives me a uh, great pleasure to be back here at IIT Madras, and uh, again, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Mahesh, for uh, a wonderful welcome introduction, as well as narrating the story. Uh, thank you, uh, Chandra Mali, for highlighting the various activities that are in progress, um, and also hosting me several times during this journey I know we've had many, many calls, uh, brainstorming the center and what we could be doing. Thank you again for that. And of course, uh, our director has been very kind in uh, listening to the proposals, supporting the proposal, and also giving me an opportunity
to contribute to this cause. Um, really super thankful for all of that. Um, I am coming at this from mostly an outsider perspective. Um, I um, uh, have taken deep interest in, of course, clean energy, not just in India, not just at IIT Madras, but also globally. And this has been a, a passion of mine. And um, obviously, the the interest level for improving India's position in clean energy is very important for me. Uh, so I thought I'll start with the vision for where I wanted wanted to start from and uh, and the motivation behind trying to get something going in this area. So, I mean, this is a political season, of course, and uh, I have to throw in the most impactful political statement from our PM Modi here. Modi ji has said uh, he wants to see India as a developed nation by 2047. And what does it mean? So that means, uh, you know, I think, uh, again, Mahesh alluded to this earlier, um, incredible growth, right? Um, at least in the 10 to 12% GDP year over year range. Um, and uh, powering that will be a huge amount of, uh, you know, energy needs. Um, so what does it mean to be a developed nation, right? You look at India, its per capita energy consumption is uh, one twelfth that of the US. Per capita consumption is one kilowatt hour. So you look at uh, 1.4 billion people, our entire electricity consumption is 1.4 terawatt. So that equates to one kilowatt hour per person. Now you look at uh, US, it's 12 times that, and China is uh, five times that. So in addition to uh, just the population growth, uh, which may be reducing a bit, but at the same time, the energy consumption per capita is going to dramatically increase. Why is this? Because everybody is going to want uh, you know, a refrigerator and, and air conditioning unit a billion people are going to want to, you know, all the comforts of a developed nation. And I'm, I'm sure by 2047, we will see uh, dozens and dozens of cities connected by bullet trains. And, uh, you know, thousands of trains going, consuming huge amount of power. And the other challenge I see here is also, while we are doing this, we also want to be clean about it, clean power. So right now, the incremental clean power is 30% year over year. So new, new uh, capacity that's coming in, 30% of it is clean power. But we want to increase it dramatically in the upcoming years. And uh, so that makes it uh, a big challenge. And uh, so again, when we look at this, um, it's a collection of technologies, right? It's a collection of solutions. Solar is a big part, but we need uh, uh, diversification of energy. And uh, wind energy has been, you know, that silent producer in plain sight. It's got very high efficiency, um, and it's readily available. Uh, but maybe because it's very old technology, people think, you know, not much needs to be done or not much can be done. But uh, if you go to wind energy conferences, look at all the papers, you see that there is tremendous research going on on many, many fronts to improve the you know, efficiency as well as capital capture and how long does it take to recover your cost. All of that is really you know, uh, significant um, you know, investment or investment areas, research areas that uh, I think people in the wind energy field already know, but the general public may not be aware. So again, if you look at the current status, uh, you know, uh, just in a timely way, just last week, the global wind energy report came out. And uh, currently, you know, uh, one terawatt hour of energy is produced by wind. And last year, 
117 gigawatts was added. And uh, so that's a good increase from 900 and, uh, you know, on a base of 907, uh, 117 gigawatt hour of new capacity came in last year. And uh, in seven years, they are projecting, you know, it should get to two terawatts. So it's actually doubling in seven years. So at least, you know, 10% growth every year. And uh, so if you look at uh, this and, uh, you know, India's position on this, India has made a good, uh, good start. You know, it has, it's uh, the fourth largest, you know, installed wind energy capacity. But at the same time, you know, there is a lot more that can be done. And so, you know, from a future perspective in just the next five years, six years, uh, we want to go from 40 gigawatt hour wind capacity to 140, right? And so that requires a tremendous amount of growth, at least three times growth. And uh, we also see, you know, India's wind power percentage of the total solution is only around 3%. And that has to increase to 6% as well. So again, all of these are, uh, you know, um, important goals. When I said vision, it also is a challenge. There is significant amount of challenge behind it. And, you know, MNRE and other governmental efforts has to work with research organizations to really drive all of this. And one area where India has zero presence is offshore. Uh, if you look at the wind capacity added, uh, at least one-third of it last year was offshore. Um, offshore has certain characteristics that are very favorable uh, for expansion and exploiting the wind potential, but uh, unfortunately, India has not made uh, much foray into this. You know, of course, China, Denmark, UK, uh, Vietnam, they're all making significant progress, and uh, you know it's time for us to catch up. And so again, as I mentioned, our capacity needs to grow quite a bit and uh, grow to 6.2%. Um, and the other part is developing the supply chain and being the global exporter. We are already second in terms of gearbox and component expansion, but nasals, we are not there. So we need to, you know, have the right research to build the technology for the best nasals. Uh, so what are the global challenges for wind energy, right? So if you look at the three biggest challenges that global wind energy face, it's around, you know, the, the so-called physics of uh, atmospheric uh, air and atmospheric wind in the zone of production. So there is uh, a big amount of research going there, going on in really improving that. Um, and if, if you look at uh, wind energy installations, they are the largest rotating, you know, uh, bodies you will find. And so there is a significant amount of you know, work to be done to uh, keep them longer lasting, failure, uh, you know, re reduce failures. And of course, offshore has significant challenges. So, you know, if you look at the research direction, the general research, lots of areas that we identified, first and foremost, in reducing the uh, capital cost. Uh, today, it probably takes anywhere from 15 to 20 years to recover the initial cost. Uh, and so that can be reduced by better, you know, um, better techniques for putting up these wind farms, connecting them, and uh, re really there is uh, a lot of work that can be done there to improve that. Uh, typically, you want to be able to recover the cost in, you know, seven to 10 years. That would be ideal. And uh, operating efficiency, a lot of work around building the right kind of um, gear transmission and gear design, all of that is part of the operational efficiency. Having the right design for blades and turbines, 
um, you know, to really capture as much of the wind available for, you know, conversion. Um, operating cost is also very important. You know, how do you maintain it uh, and keep it going? There is, there needs to be a lot of research. Uh, in fact, uh, quite a bit of machine learning, AI applications on maintaining this and maintaining the sustainability of these, very important as well. And finally, environmental challenges and environmental research are also uh, areas where you know we need to continue to uh, push the boundaries. And so I feel like IIT Madras is in, in a great place to be able to you know, contribute in all of these areas, right? And uh, we, we already have, um, you know, significant uh, research. Uh, we have monitoring systems. A lot of work has already been done that can be brought under the umbrella of the center. And uh, of course, the Energy Consortium, it already has seven um, centers of excellence, and uh, it will be great to add wind as the eighth center of excellence in the energy consortium and really participate in a big way. Um, and I feel, you know, industry participation, attracting industry into the center of excellence and have them also sponsor projects and put real projects in our hands that can be, you know, um, worked on. That would really drive innovation and really drive you know, further advances in this area. So uh, I think I want to just you know, conclude by saying the foundation that we have with the Energy Consortium and adding, adding all of this uh, new capabilities into the Energy Consortium really is super exciting for me as an alumnus it's really a great honor and it's a wonderful opportunity to, for me to contribute in, in a small way for driving the initiative and uh, again with the leadership of uh, IIT Madras under Director Kamakoti, the professors here, as well as our past leadership that has helped IIT to, IIT Madras to be the premier institute for driving the nation's research and technology. Uh, really, it's humbling and um, uh, really very thankful and gratifying to be able to participate in this, uh, in this effort. Um, I'm really glad that uh, you know, IIT Madras is able to make a big impact and uh, I have a, a role to play in this. So really thankful for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. I now uh, would like to request our uh, director to present Mr. Venkat Rangan with an Angavastram. And Dean to present him with a memento. Thank you, everyone. I now request Mrs. Jayashree Rangan to please address the gathering and share a few words. Hi, everyone. I'm very um, happy to be here 
and um, very thankful for uh, this wonderful opportunity. And uh, thank you all for uh, coming and um, looking uh, forward to see all the wonderful progress progresses that are going to happen in this uh, field and uh, feel very blessed and uh, thankful for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. I now request Mr. Kaviraj Nair, CEO of the Office of Institutional Advancement, to present the vote of thanks. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, kindly allow us to allow me to express our sincere gratitude to our uh, chief guest today and uh, senior alumnus, Mr. Venkatrangan and Mrs. Jayasri Venkatrangan, to uh, uh, for supporting the institute by you know supporting this uh, uh, wind energy center i must say that uh, venkat has been an ardent uh, supporter of iit madras and very very much committed to iit madras in fact professor mahesh and i whenever we visit uh, bay area we have been uh, you know beneficiary of, beneficiaries of his uh, generosity on multiple occasions he has hosted us at his home the entire alumni gathering and we have very fond memories of the same like so thank you so much for uh, doing his garden, actually, like you know, his uh, fruit and vegetables and all of that from the garden. He has a he has a fantastic home there. Like so, thank you so much for all your commitment and support to IIT Madras. We are all extremely grateful to both of you for uh, hosting us, for supporting IIT Madras in various ways. Uh, thank you to uh, Professor Kamakodi, Director of IIT Madras, Professor Mahesh Dean, uh, Mr. Shankar, Chair of IIT Madras Alumni Charitable Trust, other senior alumni and uh, faculty members, Professor Chandra Mowli, the HOD of uh, Mechanical Engineering Department, all of, all of you and uh, my colleagues from ACR office, all other stakeholders and uh, supporters, well-wishers of IIT Madras who are present here. Thank you for making this a, a wonderful uh, morning today and uh, for gracing this occasion. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. I would like to extend a heartfelt thank you to all our esteemed speakers, dignitaries, and attendees for this event. As we now come to a close, I request everybody to kindly stand up for the national anthem. जन गण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंज हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जल धितरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे I request everyone to please join us for high tea at the Annex Dining Hall, uh, located at the ICSR building. Thank you. Uh, we request all the dignitaries to please join us on stage for a group photo. <laughs>